The 15th of April, 1945, southwest of Bergen, Nazi Germany. The British 11th Armoured Division liberates Bergen-Belsen, one of the worst Nazi concentration camps which would epitomize the true bestiality and horrors of the Nazi regime and its death camps. The British forces find 13,000 unburied dead bodies and almost 60,000 prisoners who are sick and starved. More than 13,000 former prisoners, too ill to recover, will die of various diseases such as typhus and tuberculosis during the months following the camp's liberation. The British forces capture male and female Nazi personnel responsible for these horrors and force them to help bury the dead bodies in mass graves. One of them, who will become one of the most infamous perpetrators of the criminal Nazi regime responsible for these atrocities, is Johanna Bormann. Johanna Bormann was born on the 10th of September, 1893, in Birkenfelde, then part of the German Empire. Bormann never attended a school and was deeply religious. Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party came into power in January 1933. At that time, Bormann worked in a lunatic asylum looking after the sick and was paid 15 to 20 marks a month. German women played a vital role in the Nazi movement, one which far exceeded the Nazi party's propaganda that a woman's place was strictly in the home as mothers and child bearers. Of the estimated 40 million German women in the Reich, some 13 million were active in Nazi party organizations that furthered the regime's goals of racial purity, imperial contest, and global war. They served as welfare workers, teachers, secretaries, nurses, auxiliaries in the armed forces and police, and in many other occupations including as guards in concentration camps. One such guard would become Johanna Bormann. Bormann started her career as a guard in concentration camps at Lichtenberg in Saxony, where she worked in the kitchen. She took the job because of the money. For mistreating poor female prisoners, she was earning ten times more than she did at the lunatic asylum. Housed in a Renaissance castle, Lichtenberg was among the first concentration camps to be built by the Nazis and was operated by the SS from 1933 to 1939. From 1937 to 1939, it held only female prisoners. Bormann stayed there from 1938 until May 1939, when the whole camp was evacuated to Ravensbrück Women's Camp near Berlin. Ravensbrück, opened in May 1939, was the only major women's camp established by the Nazis. In total, some 132,000 women from all over Europe passed through the camp, including Poles, Russians, Jews, Gypsies and others. Of that number, over 92,000 women perished. Ravensbrück camp was staffed both by SS men, who served as guards and administrators, and by 150 women who served as supervisors. These female supervisors were either SS volunteers or women who had taken the job for the good pay and working conditions. Ravensbrück also housed a training camp for female SS guards, who were taught by Dorothea Binz, the sadistically cruel German Nazi officer and supervisor, who instructed her trainees on how to handle the prisoners that they were going to supervise. These prisoners would have to work until they died, and the task of their supervisors, such as Johanna Bormann, was to get the maximum amount of work out of them whilst they were still alive. Ravensbrück thus also became a training center, or a school of violence, for about 3,500 female guards who went on to serve either there or at other concentration camps. At Ravensbrück, Bormann worked one year in the kitchen, one year supervising work units, and one year on the estate of Obergruppenführer Oswald Paul who was the head administrator of the Nazi concentration camps. While working on Paul's estate, she bought a dog that would keep her company for the rest of her career as a concentration camp guard. She loved dogs because they were obedient, and she also demanded total obedience from the prisoners she supervised. The Second World War began on the 1st of September 1939, when Germany invaded Poland. Nazi Germany possessed overwhelming military superiority over Poland. Germany launched the unprovoked attack at dawn on the 1st of September with an advance force consisting of more than 2,000 tanks, supported by nearly 900 bombers and over 400 fighter planes. In all, Germany deployed 60 divisions and nearly 1.5 million men in the invasion. The assault on Poland demonstrated Germany's ability to combine air power and armor in a new kind of mobile warfare. The world adopted a new term to describe Germany's successful war tactic, Blitzkrieg or Lightning War. 
The last operational Polish unit surrendered on the 6th of October. And after this defeat, Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union divided the country in accordance with a secret protocol to the German-Soviet non-aggression pact. Very soon, the Nazis started opening new concentration camps on the territory of German-occupied Poland, and the deadliest of them became Auschwitz-Birkenau. Johanna Bormann came to the women's section of Auschwitz-Birkenau in October 1942, and her supervisors included Maria Mandel, Margot Dreschel, and Irma Grezer. Despite being deeply religious and her prior experience looking after the sick, at Auschwitz-Birkenau, she turned into a sadistic monster. According to the Holocaust survivor Helena Koper, Bormann was the most hated person in the camp. She remembered that on one occasion she saw Bormann approach a female prisoner who was walking towards the officers. Bormann stopped the woman and took something out of her pocket. She then hit the prisoner with her right hand and then clasping her by the hair, threw the woman to the ground. Bormann was holding her German shepherd by a strap in her left hand, and when the woman was lying on the ground, she let the dog go and it bit the woman severely. When the dog was finished, the woman was a mass of blood and one of her breasts had been torn severely. A doctor came and examined the woman, but because she was not moving, four prisoners were instructed to take the body away on a stretcher to Block 25, which meant that she would end up in the gas chamber. Another witness saw Johanna Bormann beat prisoners for wearing good clothes. Bormann would also strip the female inmates and make them do strenuous exercises. When they became too tired to continue, she would beat them with a rubber truncheon or a wooden stick on the head, on the back, and all parts of their body. When the bleeding victims were lying on the ground, she would also kick them. After the war, another witness, Dora Silberbear, testified about her experience with Johanna Bormann. Whilst at Auschwitz, Dora was working with the working party outside the camp. Working with her was a good friend of hers named Rachela Silberstein, who was 21 years old from Lodz in Poland. On this day, she felt very sick and could not walk on her own to the working site. Other prisoners had to assist her, and on arriving at the working site, she sat back down because she was so weak and suffered from severe pains. Bormann, who was supervising the party, ordered Dora to go to work immediately. Because she could hardly speak through the pain, Dora intervened and told Bormann that Silberstein was too ill to work. Bormann hit Dora in the face with her fist, knocking out two of her teeth and told her to go back to work. As she moved away, she hit her all over the body with a thick stick that she carried. Bormann, known as the Weasel, and the woman with the dogs, then ordered her German Shepherd, which always accompanied her, to attack Silberstein, who was sitting on the ground. The dog grasped her leg with its teeth and dragged her round and round until she finally collapsed. Bormann then ordered the dog to let go of the poor woman. After about ten minutes, Silberstein recovered consciousness, but lay all day on the ground. The leg which had been gripped by the dog became very swollen and blue-black in color because of blood poisoning. When they marched back to the camp, four girls had to carry Silberstein, and on her arrival, they took her to the hospital. When Dora went to visit her several days later, the warden told her that Rachela Silberstein had already died. According to Yilka Malachowska, who survived Auschwitz, Bormann also took part in the selections for the gas chambers. At Auschwitz, Yilka worked with her sister, Ida Malachowska, in the same working party. One morning in January 1943, before going to work, there was a selection in which Bormann was involved, and she chose 50 girls from their working party of 150, and her sister was one of those selected. The rest of them left the camp to go to work, and on their return in the evening, when they were entering the gate, nine or ten lorries passed them, filled with women and girls. The lorries went in the direction of the crematorium, which was situated just outside the camp. Yilka never saw her sister Ida again, or any of the other girls selected that morning. In 1944, as German losses mounted, Bormann was transferred to the auxiliary camp at Hindenburg in German-occupied Poland. In January 1945, she returned to Ravensbrück, and in March, she arrived at her last post, Bergen-Belsen, where she was given the job of looking after the pigsty, located in between the men's compounds. At the end of July 1944, there were around 7,300 prisoners interned in the Bergen-Belsen camp complex. At the beginning of December 1944, this number had increased to around 15,000, and in February 1945, the number of prisoners was 22,000. As prisoners evacuated from the east continued to arrive, the camp population soared to over 60,000 by the 15th of April, 1945. 
From late 1944, food rations throughout Bag and Belsen continued to shrink, and by early 1945, prisoners would sometimes go without food for days, and fresh water was also in short supply. Sanitation was incredibly inadequate, with few latrines and water faucets for tens of thousands of prisoners interned in Bag and Belsen at this time. Overcrowding, poor sanitary conditions, and the lack of adequate food, water, and shelter led to the outbreak of diseases such as typhus, tuberculosis, typhoid fever, and dysentery, causing an ever-increasing number of deaths. In the first few months of 1945, tens of thousands of prisoners died. Those who survived described the conditions in the camp as hell on earth. Dr. Peter Leonard Makari, who was a prisoner at Bagen Belsen at the time, saw Bormann on two occasions in March 1945 beat female prisoners. On the first occasion, she beat a girl on the face and head with her fists because she had caught her stealing vegetables. The girl fell to the ground and was helped away by a friend. On the second occasion, a girl tried to steal clothing from the clothing store, so Bormann beat her on the face with her fist. When Makari walked away, the girl was still ferociously being beaten by Bormann. On the 15th of April 1945, when the British liberated Bag and Belsen, they found around 60,000 starving prisoners in the camp, most of them seriously ill. The 52 pigs that Bormann was feeding with a swill of potatoes and turnips, while prisoners were dying of starvation, were slaughtered by the inmates who were still alive. When on the 17th of April 1945, Joanna Bormann was arrested by the British forces, having been forced to leave her beloved dog behind, she seemed surprised. After evacuating Bag and Belsen, British forces burned down the whole camp to prevent the spread of typhus. During its existence, approximately 50,000 persons died at Bag and Belsen, and more than 13,000 former prisoners, too ill to recover, died after liberation. Justice finally caught up with Bormann when she was tried at the Belsen trial, which began on the 17th of September, 1945. At the trial, Bormann claimed she did not know the reason why there were so many gruesome testimonies brought against her. She refused to confess to any of the charges brought against her, and when asked about her cruelty, she only admitted to having hit prisoners' faces or boxed their ears when they did not obey. Regarding her bestial dog, she even claimed that the prisoners used to play about with it. She also said she had neither participated in nor seen any selections for the gas chambers. She would have been the only one there who hadn't. However, her lies did not help her escape justice. On the 17th of November, the British military tribunal sentenced Johanna Bormann to death by hanging. She was 52 years old when the British executioner at Albert Pierpoint carried out the sentence on the 13th of December, 1945. About Bormann's last moments, Pierpoint later wrote, she limped down the corridor, looking old and haggard. Standing only a little over five feet, she was trembling as she was put on the scale. In German, she said, I have my feelings. There were no tears shed for Johanna Bormann. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.